Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here, and we're back with a brand new video, and in this video, I want to talk about Discord Gateway Intense. I'm sure you guys have heard about it already, and it's a new thing that's going to be rolled out in the newer version of the Discord API, and on October 7th of this year, 2020, you will be required to opt into Intense. Now, if you're using Discord JS version 11, you need to start updating your code base to version 12. If you're not using Discord JS, and let's say if you're developing a Python Discord bot or a JDA Discord bot, I'm not, I think JDA already supports intense already but if you're using a library that does not support intense you need to make sure that one the maintainers of that library are supporting intense in the newer version or two you switch over to a new library that supports intense but regardless you need to make sure that your library supports intense you need to make sure that you're using a library that supports intense otherwise your bot will not work now before we talk about what these intents are let's talk a little bit about what the discord gateway is so the discord gateway takes care of handling events that are sent through secure web sockets and WebSockets allow real-time communication. So whenever a message is sent, the Discord gateway will see that that message was sent and it will fire a message create event, which then your library, such as Discord JS, Discord Pi, Discord JDA, Discord.net, etc. It'll handle those message events and it'll parse the payload that is sent from the Discord gateway. And think of any action that can be performed on the Discord client, such as reacting to a message, deleting a message, editing a message, creating a channel, updating your nickname, updating your presence, etc. All of these actions cause the Discord gateway to fire an event. And we're talking about in the sense that your bot is actually authorized and is on your server. That way, these events can actually be sent to you. And for more information, feel free to check out my video that talks a lot about the Discord gateway as well as the Discord REST API. If you were ever curious about how libraries such as Discord JS were built, understanding the whole Discord gateway and REST API is the foundation to this. And at the time that this video is being made, gateway intents are optional if you're using Discord JS version 12. In version 12 of Discord JS, they do support intents, but you do not need to opt into them right now because we're still on version 6 of the Discord API. However, once the new Discord gateway version is released, you will be required to opt into gateway intents in order to receive events. Okay, so let's talk about the list of gateway intents that we can opt into. We have the guilds intent, and this guilds intent is the group of all of the events that belong to this intent. So if you opt into the guilds intent, you'll receive the guild create, guild update, guild delete, guild role create, role update, role delete, and then channel create, update, delete, and then channel pins update. So you receive all of these events whenever you opt into the guilds intent. So for example, if your bot joins a server, it's going to fire the guild create event. And since you're opted in to the guilds intent, that means that your client will receive this event. Your The gateway will actually send you the guild create event. If you're opted into guild members intent, you'll receive guild member add, update, remove. So if you have a Discord bot that sends welcoming messages or leave messages, then you'll need to make sure you opt into this intent. Likewise, depending on whatever it is that you're botting to do, you need to make sure you're opting into the correct intent. So if you have a role reaction bot, you want to make sure you're opting into guild message reactions. So whenever a message receives a reaction, it'll fire the message reaction add event and then your discord client will actually receive it and when i say discord client i mean the discord library that you're using now there's actually something called privilege intents and these intents are called privileges because they contain sensitive data so for example there is the guild presences intent and the guild members intent and if you scroll up a little bit you can see what events belong to these intents so for guild presence you can see right over here it's whenever the presence is updated so for example if my spotify song changes from you know song a to song b or if i change the game that i'm playing etc that event will be fired likewise for the guild members intent whenever a member joins the server whenever they update their nickname if they leave the server these three events will be fired and in order to actually receive these events you actually need to enable them for your application if you go over to applications and if you click on your application and i need to make sure that i am enabling the privileged gateway intent so for example if i need to send welcome messages i need to make sure that i'm enabling the server members intent right over here and the downside to this is that this might limit your bot to 100 servers in the future. So let's talk about whether or not intents are good. Now, there are many advantages to gateway intents. And the first couple of things that come to mind are network traffic decrease. So for example, if you never have to worry about certain events that are occurring, then you don't have to opt into them. So if you just need a bot that just handles basic text commands,
commands, you can just opt into the guild messages intent and you'll only ever receive events such as message create, message update, message delete, or message delete bulk. If you only need a role reaction bot, then you can just opt into the guild message reactions intent and you'll only receive these four events and it can definitely benefit a lot too and it will definitely decrease network traffic because you're not receiving events that you just don't need now for the downside of intents the only negative things that i can really think about at the moment are privilege intents so if you have a large bot that uses any of the privilege intents that we talked about such as guild members or guild presences again your bot may be limited to only 100 guilds in the future and this is because of the sensitive data that these payloads send to the client i think you actually might need to verify your bot so that way your bot doesn't actually get limited to 100 servers because i know there's this whole thing with verification so you must verify your identity and submit your application for approval before growing past 100 guilds so yeah that's pretty much what it is if you don't verify then your bot will not be able to join over 100 servers but if you do verify then your bot should be able to without any problems join over 100 servers and you'll also have the verified bot developer badge on discord and likewise um again it's not really much of a problem if your bot isn't in 100 guilds now finally what do i think about gateway intents and personally i just think that they're great it will without a doubt decrease network traffic so you don't ever have to worry about events when you don't opt into them. And if you're on Discord JS version 11, there's actually a link. I'll post it in the description. But they talk a lot about gateway intents and they tell you how to use them. And it's a really detailed guide. So I highly suggest you guys to check it out. All right, so I have a simple project over here. And I'm going to demonstrate how to actually opt into intents. So you need to pass in an object in the client constructor over here. And what you're going to do is you're going to type WS, which stands for WebSocket. And it's going to map to an object. And inside this object, we're going to have an intents property, which is going to be an array of all the intents that we want to opt into. Now, if we go ahead and we opt into guild messages, this actually won't work because we actually need to opt into, I think, both guild and guild messages. I was testing this out a little bit and it was giving me a little bit of issues, but I'm pretty sure that you need to opt into both guilds and guild messages. So it might be a side effect that's part of the Discord library because the guild might not be in the cache, but we can just double check or the channel might not be in the cache. Okay, if I do test, you can see now that it works. So we opted into both guilds and guild messages. And you can see right over here for guilds, these are all of the events that are sent to us now. Guild create, guild update, guild delete. And you can see for guild messages, if we ever update, delete, or delete bulk, or send a message, we will receive those events as well. So let me just go ahead and generate the message reaction add event. So I wanna show you guys how this works. So message reaction add, move. Let's just do those two for now. Okay, that should be fine. All right, so we have these two events and let's just do this. A reaction was added. And let's also just console log was removed. So these events will currently be fired only if the message is in the cache because we're not opted into partials. So let me actually opt into partials real quick. Partials, reaction, message. All right, so just wait for our bot to log in. Okay, so I'm reacting to messages right now. And notice how we're not receiving any events, right? So now if I get rid of this WS property and if I just leave it with partials, and now if I react to the message, let me unreact. You can see that a reaction was removed. And if I remove the other reaction, it's going to fire that event again. Likewise, if I go back and if I react to the message, it's going to fire that event again. And the same thing over here. Okay, and the reason why we weren't receiving it before was because we were opted in to only guilds and guild messages intent. If we want to receive message reaction add, message reaction remove events, we need to make sure we're opting into the correct intent. So guild message reactions is the correct one, as you can see right here. So now we'll be able to receive all four of these events. So if we go over here, and now that we're logged in, let's go and react to... Let's see, that seemed to not have worked. I think we might need uh, something else. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me send a message. Okay, so that message was sent. Okay, there we go. So it seemed to, seemed to have some kind of confliction uh, when we had partials opted in. I'm not entirely sure what other intent that we would need to opt into, but that might be a side effect. So I'm not 100% sure. That might be something that uh, could be reported to Discord JS devs. They could look into it. Well, you can see right over here that I sent the message and that message is in the cache and I can react to it and you can see the event is fired. Now watch this. If I go ahead and if I get rid of the intent and if I save... 
Okay, so let's send a message and let's react. You can see that the event is not fired anymore because we are not opted into the intent. So that way we will never receive any of these events at all. So hopefully this video made sense and hopefully you guys understand what intents are, what they're for, the whole purpose of them. And yeah, just make sure that you guys are updating your code to version 12 of Discord JS by October 7th. Otherwise your bot will not work. So anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.